Some people are allergic to some food types, and, in the majority of cases, the allergic reactions caused are mild but irritating. Some people, however, become very ill when they eat or come into contact with certain food types. In rare cases, this reaction can be fatal. Dr. Claire Mills is the head of the allergy cluster at the Institute of Food Research in Norwich. What we, we have at the moment estimates of how many people suffer from food allergies. Um, it's around 1-2% to 2 of adults, but the rates are much higher in young children in preschool um, age group where allergies, food allergies run at around 5-7% to 7 of the population. There are basically two different kinds of allergy. The first one involves um, producing a molecule which we call IgE. Um, it's normally produced by the body to fight parasitic infections, but for reasons we don't understand, some people start to make it to substances like pollen, and then you get hay fever, and in others they make it to foods, and then you get food allergies. The other kind of allergy that we can get to food involves the cells of the immune system that normally fight infection. And in this case, they react to gluten found from wheat and they attack the lining of the gut and that gives you a disease called celiac disease. Well, they need to avoid any kinds of foods that contain wheat. They're actually allergic to the gluten fraction of wheat, which if you wash flour out, you can get a, a, an elastic mass, which is like chewing gum. And this is what allows us to actually make lots of different things from wheat, like bread and biscuits. And that's the substance that people with celiac disease react to. The other kinds of food allergy that involves IgE can be triggered by foods like cow's milk and egg, particularly in young children, peanuts and, uh, peanuts and other kinds of tree nuts, fish, shrimp, and in some they also have a reaction to soybean. One, something that's quite intriguing is that the patterns of allergies to foods varies around the world and we can even see this within Europe. So for example, in the south of Europe, they can suffer from a very severe allergic reaction to peach and to other kinds of fruits. But we never see that kind of a reaction in northern Europe. Um, instead, the severe reactions there might be found, for example, to peanuts. Once you've become allergic, when you either eat a food or you inhale pollen, the um, IgE molecules that you've made actually sit on the surface of cells called mast cells. And these are packed full of a substance called histamine. And when they meet the allergen from the food, the histamine is released. And that histamine goes on to cause all the sorts of symptoms associated with an allergic reaction. So for some people, they'll get skin reactions. Um, one is eczema, another is um, nettle rash or hives. For others, maybe people with asthma, they'll get an asthmatic reaction. And for others, they get gastrointestinal gut reactions and they'll either have vomiting or diarrhea. For a very few people, uh, they can suffer a very severe type of allergic reaction called anaphylaxis. This is very characteristic, characterised by um, individuals having a sense of morbid dread before the reaction happens. It happens very quickly, probably within a minutes, tens of minutes maximum of, of being exposed to the problem food. And they often end up with bad asthma, swelling in the throat 
and they have a very characteristic rapid drop in blood pressure. These symptoms are life-threatening and actually if it goes untreated someone can actually die. Generally speaking people with this type of severe allergy carry an adrenaline pen which they can administer to themselves when they think they've eaten a problem food. It might be if somebody had a reaction in your restaurant you need to make sure that they actually have their adrenaline and get them into the recovery position um, before contacting the accident and emergency um, services to get them to come out and look after the person. There is quite a range about the amount of food that can, is needed to be consumed to cause a reaction. For some people it might be the equivalent of the, a daily serving. But for some, again, they can react to very, very small amounts, just a bite. And there are descriptions of people who've suffered allergic reactions after being kissed by a parent or a loved one who's been just been eating the food that they have an allergy to. So just a kiss can... If you have a salad bar and you have maybe some salads with cheese in, others with sesame seed or walnut um, seed oil dressings, and those common utensils get used to serve all the salads, it will mean that someone with a nut allergy or a cow's milk allergy will not be able to eat any of those salads. This includes the fact that sometimes nuts and allergenic ingredients are used to decorate and garnish foods actually removing the garnish isn't enough. There might still be enough trace of nuts or nut containing uh, substances on the food to cause an allergic reaction. And if somebody comes to you with a nut allergy or a wheat allergy and says they have to have the food free of it, you must make it completely fresh from ingredients and not try and uh, remove sources and so on that contain the allergenic food. And the first thing is to take them seriously and to understand the question that they're asking. They're not trying to be difficult. They're asking you for information about the food that you're providing for them. First of all, check the ingredients that have been included in a dish. And if you've used a pre-packaged or pre-prepared ingredient like Worcester sauce or something like that, check the ingredient label on that as well. And if you're in doubt, show the ingredient label to the customer. It will reassure them that you're taking them seriously and you're providing them with the information they need. And the important thing there is to really prepare food for them that clearly is free of the allergenic food they, they, that's a problem for them and that is um, good to eat. Sometimes allergy sufferers end up with um, a very strange food being pro provided for them by catering outlets. Well, I think first of all, the restaurant has a responsibility to listen to their customer and uh, provide them with the information that they're asking for about the allergens in the foods. And secondly, when you're going to prepare a food for an allergic customer, make sure that you're freshly preparing it and that you've actually cleaned all your utensils and, and uh, culinary items that you're going to use to make the food and actually you do use things like fresh batches of cooking oil so that you've got no chance to transfer allergens um, into the food you're preparing.